Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is? Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and the little notification bell. Ring my bell, baby. On to the point. I just watched a video that Jeff Nippard made discussing effective reps, and he was talking a bit about the science behind it. And... You know, this is something I've discussed quite a bit recently, too, of talking about reps and reserve, effective reps, getting a training effect. And he broke down a couple of studies and, and broke down some stuff that Dr. Mike Israel said to where it's not a straightforward thing the way that a lot of people think it is. Um, because as I've said, that most of the data is kind of indicated that your real training effect comes within the last five reps within failure. And we could calculate that based off one rep max calculators, and we could calculate this even when we're ramping up heavy singles, right? We know that, that you start going above about 86%, even singles start to fall into that category of having a training effect. Uh, but then we would have to also discuss the issue of compensatory acceleration. And that kind of throws a curveball into the whole thing. Uh, because oftentimes these, these studies are using a, a standardized tempo. They're not lifting the weight as hard and as fast as you can on every rep. But I think we can, we can cover that with some of the stuff on the advanced lifters. Um, but what he had said is that the, the general theory, and it seems to be decently supported in a lot of the literature at this point, is that usually the, your best training response, if not the majority of it, are going to come from the last five reps that you have in reserve. And what you had Dr. Mike had said is that it, it really is more of an S-curve. It's not like uh, people think it's just a hard cutoff. That usually when you hit about the fifth rep in reserve, you're starting to get a, a pretty pronounced training effect. And there's a larger effect when you get to four rep in reserve. Then three, there's a larger effect of quality stimulus per rep. And then maybe the last couple, it drops way off as far as them improving. And then obviously going all the way to failure doesn't really seem to have an improvement. And that's what people need to, to remember is that particularly for more advanced lifters, that's what a lot of this research is. It does show that it actually going to failure doesn't produce better muscle growth. And in some cases it can slightly reduce it depending upon the level of training experience. And I think where that gets mixed up is, is people thinking in terms of all exercises instead of saying, hey, which exercises is that a problem on? In other words, going to actual failure, the very last rep that you fail on, depending upon the lift itself, can have an enormous impact on your recovery, but it doesn't actually cause any growth stimulation. People say, well, what do you mean? Because not completing a rep means you didn't recruit enough muscle fibers. In other words, those upper motor unit fibers weren't able to push hard enough to actually get anywhere. You've finished. You've already fatigued to the point to where you're not stimulating uh, those fibers anymore. And what he pointed out he thought was interesting and it's been speculated and, and I would agree with this point that the more advanced a lifter gets the less the data tends to show that they benefit from actually getting right up to the edge of failure in terms of hypertrophy. And it has to do with motor unit recruitment. In other words novice lifters Let's come over to the point I always make. Novice lifters need to do very, very few exercises for a reason. Why? They need the motor unit learning. In other words, if I throw six different quad exercises at you as a novice, you're never going to learn any specific exercise. If we have you come in and squat three days a week, you're going to get relatively efficient at performing a squat and the motor pattern of a squat. Well, why does that matter? Well, let's come back over and think about the, the thing that they notice as far as motor unit recruitment. A more advanced lifter has more practice, more skill, more proficiency on the movement patterns. They are able to recruit more motor units and put them directly into moving the weight. All right? See where we're going with this? The novice lifter just isn't very good at that lift yet until he has practiced that movement pattern. And by practicing it, you become more efficient at producing motor units, right? You, you can recruit motor units. You can recruit muscle fibers more effectively on the lifts that you've gained, gained a degree of proficiency with. This is one reason I push minimalist training so hard for the first year. Minimalist doesn't mean necessarily low volume. It means minimal exercise selection. 
you have to master some basic movement patterns. And I don't do it because you, you just need to master the squat per se. It's because the squat brings so many muscle fibers into play that if I were to compare it to a leg press or a front squat or another exercise, those, those you could do the same thing. There's just less total muscles involved. And if I'm going to minimize the number of exercises you do, we should probably push people in the direction of picking the exercises that recruit the most muscle fibers, right? The inclined bench doesn't recruit quite as many total muscles as the flat bench. It's a little bit less. The front squat doesn't have quite the total muscle potential that the back squat does. It's a little bit less. And so if we're only going to do a handful of exercises, that's the only reason I push the biggest ones possible, is we don't want to shortchange what we get out of them. Because if we're only going to do five, six, seven maybe eight exercises at the most, you're going to need to be selective. And novice lifters get proficient at them, and as they do, they start to get better at hitting upper threshold fibers with more reps in reserve. It's the reason you're getting stronger. It's the hypertrophy and the ability to recruit motor units. So that's, that's a big part of it. And what we find with the more advanced lifters, the more advanced you get, because some of the studies we're finding better muscle growth by stopping a few reps short of failure in a lot of more advanced lifters, well, it's because of the exercise selection most likely. But the more advanced you get, obviously, you get good at recruiting muscle fibers. In fact, if you've done enough various exercises, you're good at doing it at almost any angle. In other words, we could take an exercise you haven't done in six months, and you're still going to be way more efficient at it if you have years and years of training because you're just used to doing all these, these movement patterns anyways. It's only about six basic movement patterns, and then everything else is a variation of it as far as big movements. Well, you still have a baseline proficiency that you can return to, and you're going to be capable of hitting upper threshold fibers easier on a lift you haven't done in six months or a year than a novice lifter does. So we kind of come over to the point of the more advanced you get, you need to be probably avoiding failure with big exercises. Well, why? Because when you hit true failure on a big exercise, it impedes your recovery dramatically. You're going to be able to train less. That's not good for the more advanced lifter because we do need more and more quality volume. The more advanced you get to continue to stimulate adaptation, you have a higher threshold to break the homeostasis in your body to actually force it to change at all, to, not e to even stay where you're at sometimes. So when people say things like, oh, how hard is it to keep muscle? Well, the more advanced you are, the harder it is. In other words, you actually have to train more the bigger and stronger and more advanced you get to even keep what you have. It's no longer a case of, hey, what's my maintenance? Well, if you've gained your first 10 pounds of muscle, it's a lot easier to hold on to that. You're going to have to train a lot less than someone who's gained 25 pounds of muscle to keep it, simply put. Whereas, as, in, as Jeff pointed out, and I would agree with this, I don't think we gain muscle particularly well at all in 20-plus rep sets. And I know people say, but this study and that, those studies do not show long-term myofibular hypertrophy over the course of a year. They're usually looking at biomarkers. We're looking at biomarkers. Um, but I would say that, and this is where I would agree with him, but Jeff basically says, well, you start going to 20 plus, these pump sets, you need to take them pretty much to failure. Um, probably so, but I would say anything over about 10 reps. You start exceeding 10 reps, you, you need to pretty much take those to failure. And that stuff should be reserved to generally smaller exercises. There's a few decent multi-joint exercises. You could probably go up to 12 and be fine. But when we start going beyond, uh, beyond about 10, that should be reserved for very small exercises. Why? Because to get much out of them, you really need to push them to their limits. They need to be pushed pretty much to failure. And... We're usually doing these exercises to fill in volume that we wouldn't be able to recover from if we added the same number of sets on a big movement. In other words, it's a lot easier to recover from a band press down for your triceps than it is heavy benching. You were to take a 10 rep set, add five extra sets of bench press sets of, five, of 10 to failure, try recovering to that, that if you're adding that to your normal training. Just trying to get to your triceps. Right? That's going to be problematic. Five sets of ten taken to failure is an add-on, a supplemental lift. On the bench press, is going to destroy most people's recovery as part of a program. 
five sets of press downs trying to get to your triceps, you can recover from pretty easily and you can reach a higher volume of, of quality training. And that's the difference. So that's the reason we, we pick a lot of these other exercises, even for strength athletes. It's not because they're necessarily a superior stimulus. It's that we can handle higher thresholds of volume on them and, and quality reps to where we start getting close to failure without it destroying our recovery. That's the only issue. That's the reason for that. Not that they're actually better. Um, so I would say with a lot of that, though, when we start talking about reps in reserve, um, I'm going to say a lot of it depends on the exercise that you're picking, particularly for the advanced lifter. Right? The advanced lifter will be fine taking some bunch of their smaller movements to failure. Plenty of advanced lifters do. Elite lifters do. Not an issue. Doing it on a squat or a bench press, probably not so much. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.